Right now, though, it is time for Boston List. It's Thursday lunchtime. It's what we do every week. Five questions to somebody successful from the West Midlands that finds out a little bit more about them and why this place is so important to them. And my guest today is actress Claudia Jesse. She lives in the Jewellery Quarter in Birmingham and she's uh, appeared in lots of dramas for someone so young. Um, Line of Duty being one of the biggest ones. Vanity Fair as well. And carrying on with the period drama theme, although it's a period drama with a twist, Bridgerton. It's it's kind of like a renaissance romp. It's a little bit saucy in places. Absolute compulsive viewing. I've loved the first two series and series three is on the way. She plays Eloise, one of the main characters in uh, Bridgerton. And the new series begins in May. She started off by telling me what she's been up to recently. My life has felt like Bridgerton. It's just Bridgerton since April 2019. Because that's when I auditioned for it. My audition was on April the 4th, 2019. Um, so every year, I mostly will be like, Bridgerton's going to happen at some point. <laughs> so that's kind of it. And then I do enjoy a down period because I get to come home. I get to be back in my flat, back with my family. So a lot of it will be just pottering about. I'm quite uh, quite nesty. I quite like to be at home. And I feel I do feel like when I do go away for work, I, ch- uh, I don't know why I'd, I'd made an odd choice for someone who feels like they're getting wrenched away from home whenever I do. So I- I'm going to say mostly Bridgerton. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wh- when, where do you film Bridgerton? Um, so down south, like just West London, we've sort of been out in far West London in a studio. And then we do... Uh, locations will go to like Bath or, you know, like big fancy homes. And I feel dead bad. But like once you've filmed in one manor house, they all become, <laughs> they've all merged into one. Like once you've uh, gone through one Regency door, then know, you've gone through all of them. It basically. feels a bit ungrateful, but I am like, oh, it's nice. <laughs> it's a lovely big house again. <laughs> I mean, and you get to wear these incredible clothes mm, as well. Yeah. I mean, Eloise is a fantastic character. Yeah. You... I suppose, was it one of those pinch me moments when you got that part? I mean, you are perfect for her, I think. Cheers, mate. Thank you. I I will be beside myself the day I have to stop playing her. So, uh, I mean, they can have me for as long as they want me, (laughs) honestly. Because we're on series three. Yeah, series three comes out. The first part on May 16th. Look at me, I'm going to make sure I'm a good student. May 16th. Can't wait. And then the second part is uh, June 13th. So I, I have never had more fun on a set than I have playing Eloise. And I'll be heartbroken the day I don't. So I, I really try and make the most of it. Well, let's hope that that isn't any time soon. Yeah. Because, I mean, I... And I know it, it came out just the right time, didn't it? Yeah. It was, you know, COVID it and awful. awfulness. And it's just... It's funny it's smart it looks beautiful it's a bit ridiculous at times <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's it's wonderful and some of the dialogue so wonderful and it's just it's brilliantly cast mm. and it's just great it's I a agree. bit raunchy sometimes yeah. which i am not averse to yeah. and it's just it is a brilliant it's a brilliant piece of viewing it's a brilliant piece of entertainment i do really appreciate what shondaland does is they make <clears throat> they make telly for us like for them for everyone rather than sometimes I can you can watch things or be a part of something and you're like oh I feel like this has been made for everybody else in the industry and it doesn't feel sincere or fun and I think yeah it happened at the right time because it was so dreadful and it was like a big cuddle and I I really appreciate uh, the fans that took to it and have stuck by it and it's just guilt-free yummy telly it is that is it it's gorgeous it's yeah. yummy gorgeous telly the costumes and i mean just in all that get up right how do you have a loo break in that because well, th- genuinely i know but, this is probably a fun, well-worn no, no, no. question but it's I'm not desperate to know. it's not the well-worn question everyone's always like oh is it uncomfortable do you feel restricted and i'm like listen those things, those costumes are tailor-made to our bodies. We're so fortunate. We don't go to a big warehouse. These incredible uh, like costume warehouses and whatever, they're amazing and a huge part of the industry. But we, they get made from scratch. They're tailor-made to our body. But the most annoying thing is wearing things, it's going to the toilet. It's the first thing I thought. Oh, but it's the, as you're just, I've made the decision to just be dehydrated for eight months of the year. <laughs> 
in wh- whatever happens mm. happens yeah, yeah. Um, but it must be it must be it's quite a thing it's quite a thing wearing those as it was for all the people who wore them and of course this is about like people who were incredibly privileged in many mm. ways but it brings in other elements as well and I just love Eloise is so cheeky but, mm. and so clever and so smart and her relationship with all of the people around her is just brilliantly done so um, congratulations on making us all very happy thank you because it is wonderful can't wait for series three but of course you've done lots of other things as well i mean it's once you're in something that's a machine like this though Mm. does it make you sort of long for something very different again like i know you've done line of duty something Mm. that is or is it that different or is it really the same thing i don't know i'm working class so to me any job i get in this industry i'm buzzing (laughs) It's a competition to be in this industry anyway. It was really difficult. And the percentage of working class people in this industry is incredibly, incredibly small. We're not outnumbered in the country, but we are in the industry. So for me, any time I'm working, my desire was always to be able to get paid for this and I'd give it a shot. And my mum worked really hard for me to be able to do that. We couldn't afford to do any sort of creative, ex- like extracurriculum sort of thing. So my mum would clean the houses. My mum was cleaner. She'd clean the houses of like a dance teacher or a violin teacher or something in and exchange she'd do it in- for a lesson so that I could get something. Like that's how, that's how poor we were. <laughs> so if for me, doing Line of Duty was actually a huge moment for me because firstly, I loved that show and it felt like I was like, oh my God, I'm in this serious piece of work. And then Bridgerton is like what I think young children would have drawn a picture of if they wanted to be an actor of what they could do in the future. So I'm eternally grateful for everything that well, comes my way. Well, yeah, but hang on a minute. You know, that takes out you in this equation and you're, <laughs> you're very talented. And also, I always think, I know parents can be like, biased and sometimes wrongly Mm. biased but I don't think when it's very serious like that and it is serious because she was working to get you Mm. in kind payments and stuff she knew that you were good it's very she must she must have known you were good I think she definitely saw something I think she did want me and my brother to have opportunities like anyone else and yeah I think she did see something in me I think she saw that I was more creative than academic uh didn't spend a lot of time at school (laughs) so uh, she put all of her effort into that and she didn't have to as well because there are plenty of parents that aren't in a position to do that as well to support their child so you've been working continuously which isn't a small thing since you were what a teenager really well just after i actually my first professional gig with my agent i was 22 so it's been 12 years working and I've had the same agent the the whole time bless him he took me on when everyone quite rightly said no (laughs) and um yeah so it's been 12 years it was just mad to me I love the fact that you're you're a proper brummie as well and we're going to come on to the Boston this questions in a minute but just just quickly in terms of things being like bigged up but not really oh yeah that's very the, brummy <laughs> the, yeah but also like people not putting the money where their mouth is with things that do you think that's changing in terms of the west midlands do you think the west midlands is somewhere where actors want to be again now i really hope so there's so much talent in the west midlands we're responsible for a lot of like huge pieces of art huge pieces of film and tv massive like you know, there's not every, not every show becomes like a cultural phenomenon. And then you look at Peaky Blinders and something like that really did. And um, it's because of the heart of the city, I think. And it was ha- handled with like real respect of the city, which I think is important. I wanted to be back in Birmingham uh, as soon as I could. I went, I moved to London when I was like 21, I think. And I wanted to be back as soon as possible. And I remember telling my agent, I was at like, the minute I can go back without feeling like I have to be at this audition, this audition, trying to trying to make it, quote unquote, I'll come home. And then it turned out I got so poor I had to move home. <laughs> and then it was brilliant because I've been back for 10 years and no one's ever given me a good enough reason to leave. Well, you've just preempted question number one on the Boston list. For <laughs> Claudia Jesse, which part of the West Midlands do you call home? I was born in Moseley. Um beautiful part of Birmingham really beautiful I think I think we were in a be- I think my mum said we were in a bed sit <clears throat> in Moseley it's gorgeous it's always maintained that real bohemian like uh, vibe hasn't it and now I live in the jewellery quarter I've been in town I've been living in town for a long time now because I was on a canal boat on the canal wow. in, in town as well near the sea life centre 
Uh, I'm not on there anymore. One of my best mates lives on my boat, buzzing. Um, but <laughs> so I, you can go for a party on the boat. Yeah, but you don't I can to, still see it, which is happening. You don't have to cram into the small, the yeah, tiny little bits. I can't let go of it. But yeah, I live in the jewellery quarter, which makes me very happy. I'm right next to Hockley and the jewellery quarter and town. The access is unbelievable. I love the community sort of that there is. And there's always, you know, there's the simple square, which I find a lot of peace in. Um and also, I don't have a, a garden. I live in a in a flat, and the, that becomes the like, jewelry quarters garden. That square, like I moved in the summer last year into the into the flat, and everyone just chills out there, and it's beautiful. I go to a Christmas carol concert every year with my mum and dad in that in that church. Oh, beautiful! And it's the highlight of of Christmas. It's a gorgeous church. It's the highlight of the year sometimes. Yeah, but they do that, a lot of live music there and stuff. It's beautiful. Isn't there? That square mm-hmm. is very very special, isn't it? Yeah, it is gorgeous. And uh, I always think people, if they don't know Birmingham, they they it's like a secret and they can't believe it. They can't believe that that it looks like that in the jewellery quarter. Our pals, mine and my fellas pals, my my fellas from London, and he moved. Moved to Brahms. Of course he did. He, and he yeah. moved for you. He loves it. He loves it so much. But our pals will come and stay with us. And there's always that sort of, oh, oh. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's not. You're like, yeah, it's lovely. It's really not that difficult to see. And you really shouldn't be that surprised. Yeah. But yeah, people are. Um, question number two then for Claudia Jesse today uh, on Boston List. You've got a day off. Mm. It's completely free. The diary's free. You can do whatever you want in Birmingham and Black Country. What are you doing? All right, I thought about this. This is uh, uh, difficult. It's between two things, so I'm hoping I can merge it into one day. Uh, the first is I'll go with my best mate Layla to either the Clent Hills or the Licky Hills uh, to take my dog for a walk. Beautiful. It's so close. That's the thing about uh, the West Midlands as well. You're like 10 minutes away from like tumbling countryside, like Green Hill, beautiful. I'll do that. Then I'll come back and I'll probably see my other best mate Faye and we'll, we'll go around the rag markets. She oh, knows. Did you do that when you were younger, a lot? Oh yeah. And but the thing is, my friend Faye, she knows everybody there. She knows them all by name. She knows absolutely <laughs> everybody. We're walking around. Everyone's like, "Are oh, you Bob?" And she knows them all. It's my favourite thing to do. And we will really we call it going for a mooch. So we're like, "Bob, you free? Let's go for a mooch." Oh, will you buy anything? Oh yeah, I'll buy a lot of yarn. I'm quite a, an avid crocheter. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'll get a lot of yarn. What do you crochet? Um, at the moment, I, well, the last big thing I made was a big crochet bag to put all of my crochet things in. <laughs> that is meta. I love that. Yeah, making a big blanket at the moment. I'm not incredibly skilled. My my friend's much better than me. But uh, so I'll go there. I'll also there's the big like pets bit. So I get dog food on the cheap. It's unbelievable. That is a something we need to keep alive. It's a beautiful part of Birmingham. And then I'll come home to the flat. And I will get a curry. I'll get a takeaway. I'll go to Soho Tavern. It's beautiful. So I think it's in Hansworth. Uh, and then I'll have a curry in the flat. That is, that's my idea of absolute And heaven. you'd feel very, like, replenished after that day. Yeah. I feel like that whenever I'm in Birmingham. So, yeah. so then that is what you do. Yeah, that is what it's I do. It's actually what you do. That's with literally what I do. And most of people say, because I sometimes say you can have fantasy ideas, but, but actually most people, it's something very, very simple because life yeah. is very busy, isn't it? Yeah. And they just want to be around the things they love simply with their with their family and friends, yeah. basically. Um, question number three then, and I'm dying to know what you're going to pick here. You can pick one West Midlands artist singing or doing one piece of music. What are you picking and why? So this person's been played on BBC WM before <clears throat> and they're my one of my best friends in the whole world. His name is Tony Willay. He's 74 years old, but his uh, band is called Shy Face Troubadour and he has a song called DIY for Butterfly. Uh, he's got a beautiful album called October Man. It's gorgeous. But we've known each other since I was like 17 years old he's like a family friend and we call ourselves together the Buddha and a dame it's it, I mean it's, he's just the most beautiful human being and this song when I was trying to build the rest of my boat I was building the rest of it with my stepdad and I was so tired and I was holding a hammer and a screwdriver and I called them both spanners <laughs> I was so tired and then I we sent a picture of me holding these t- tools to Tony and he wrote a song called DIY for Butterfly. And that is the song I'd love to play. Wow. Yeah. This, th- I think this is a first on Boston list that the song is about. How self-centred is that? No, it's not. <laughs> me being it's, like, it's about me. It, it's not self-centred. <laughs> it's beautiful. And uh, here it is. Wow. 
Has anyone ever written a song about me, I wonder? If they have, they haven't told me. Oh, no, actually, my husband, when we were very, very early days, early 20s, you don't know what you're doing, do you? He kind of half wrote a song about me, but um, I don't think it was that complimentary in the end, which is quite funny. Anyway, that was Shy Face Troubadour and DIY for Butterfly. The choice of our guest today on Boston List, Claudia Jessie, actress who's been in Bridgerton, of course, as Eloise for the last, oh, quite a few years now, Series 3 coming out very soon. Uh, she's been in Line of Duty and lots of other things as well and we'll ask her questions four and five after this. Justin Timberlake on BBC Radio WM. We're in the middle of Boston list for a Thursday lunchtime with me, Kath. And today my guest is Claudia Jessie. She lives in the Jewellery Quarter in the heart of Brum and she is an actress most well known at the moment for playing Eloise in Bridgerton. The new series, the third series, comes out in May on Netflix. Question four for Claudia Jessie today. What thing about the West Midlands annoys you the most? I'm going to remove it from the responsibility of the West Midlands and say, it's people's misconception of the West Midlands I think is one of the most infuriating things in the world <laughs> um, have you had that oh, in your my, career like it's so dated as well like I find it so boring I still get people who are like oh where do you live I'm like Birmingham they're like oh sorry about that I'm like don't feel too sorry for me mate. I can afford my house <laughs> I'm like this is outrageous the, be the behaviour um, I find it dated I find it I know that there's sort of a history in in the mocking of Birmingham where it's don't I don't know it's been resorted down to that one character in the far show who was like I'll oh, give me coat that one I get it but the accent's delicious uh the people are some of the kindest people you'll ever meet we've got an unbelievable amount of history industry we're responsible for so many things inventions and we've got fantastic food culture um so i'd say it's a them problem and not an us problem and, and it's a common it is a common answer oh, in different it? in different forms got it mine it's, was it's, quite furious no i loved it i loved it yours was <laughs> yeah it was robust and i enjoyed that and you've kind of half answered the last question as well question number five the final one on boston list which is you're somewhere else in the world or in the country. They don't know it. They don't know it. They've, they've maybe got a negative perception or they just don't know about Birmingham and the black country. What's your pitch to them in terms of you need to come and visit? <clears throat> maybe you need to come and live. I've always felt incredibly protective over coming from the West Midlands. I've always felt really protective over, over my family, all my mum's side of the family, all Brummies. And... Whenever I'm away working and I'll get the train back into Birmingham, there's a certain point where I can start to see town and my shoulders will physically drop down and I can feel my shoulder blades moving down my back. And I feel like I've had some really high-end painkillers. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious painkillers. And I realise it's because it's the safest I've ever felt anywhere. It's the most held I've ever felt anywhere. One of the greatest things that I think can sometimes be its downfall is that Birmingham's a really strong city that doesn't take itself seriously in any way. We're not concerned with being small fish in a big pond or big fish trying to be this thing in a small pond or whatever that is. We're not concerned with it. I think it's got <clears throat> a really good quality of life in terms of whenever I go into town or where, whenever I'm pottering about, there's so much activity and I think it's because people have managed to uh, build their lives in such a grounded way. And I don't know who wouldn't want to be a part of that, of a place that doesn't take itself too seriously and it's just filled with always see smiling faces. But selfishly, <laughs> I have always been like, do you know what? If you don't know, that's fine. Yeah, because don't <laughs> my restaurant, my favourite restaurant, I'd like tables available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I always feel like Birmingham's my favourite restaurant. They've still got seats available and I'm, I'm okay with that. 
Claudia Jesse, my guest on Boston List today. I can't wait for the new series of Bridgerton. She plays Eloise so brilliantly. If you haven't seen Bridgerton, it is on Netflix, so you're gonna have Netflix, but it's it's daft. Like it's daft but brilliant. It's all like Renee like costumes, sort of big fancy aristocratic costumes from like the seventeen hundred style, but it's got a modern twist. The music's modern. There's quite a lot of raunchiness in it. It's like not it's it's that style period drama with a difference and its relationships and families and all of that and uh, it is silly but in a brilliant brilliant way and claudia is amazing in it thanks so much to claudia jesse for being my guest today 